Hi there. I hope everyone is doing well and being blessed by the Lord's goodness today. So some time ago, Jeannie and Carolyn had it on their hearts for us to look at Psalm 119, the largest psalm in the Bible, the longest chapter in the Bible. So when someone has it on their heart like that, out of the mouths of two or three witnesses, we ought to follow that route and see what the Lord is saying to us. Psalm 119, such a special psalm, and it's like a tapestry, it weaves in and out with such lovely messages. And uh, you know, a, a, an embroidery like the, the Bayer tapestry, it's one of the world's famous tapestries, isn't it, of medieval art. Did you know it's 70 metres long? And it's, it chronicles the, the tale, you know, of the Norman conquest of England with William the Conqueror defeating King Harold. Well, it, it's, there's lots of interesting features in that tapestry, and Psalm 119 is similar we need to spend time looking at it and saying, oh yeah, I can see that. So you may have noticed that it deals with the word. You can't read very far into Psalm 119 without thinking this is all about God's word. Now, we have a um, clue straight away there because... John, 1 John, tells us that in the beginning was the Word. So this Psalm 119 is important for us to grasp. It's special. And the Word, what do we get when we think of the word Word? We, we see that word, I'm using words to speak to you now, aren't I? And you're seeing what I am. Am what's in my thoughts, what's in my heart, through the words that I speak. And the word is an expression of goodness, light, and the love of God. The word. It's an expression of. So my, my words express what I feel, what I think. And, and so we see the, the word of God is very special. And we see Christ in this psalm. As you, if you take the general view of the psalm, it's like you've got the word of God, but you've also got suffering linked in each stanza. There's suffering, affliction mentioned. So we see the Lord Jesus in this psalm. So it's important for us to Get this overview of the psalm. Now, you know each uh, stanza, there's 22 stanzas. Each stanza is based on a letter of the alphabet. Now, the alphabet makes up words. And the alphabet in itself is special. F before the alphabet, people did write... They used to write using cuneiform, which was kind of syllables um, and kind of, um, you, you know, you'd have to have um, a lot of uh, these symbols, uh, logograms, that was the word I was after, yeah, to, to identify which symbol it was. And there could be 600 of these symbols, up to a 1,000 actually, dependent on which language you were using. I think there's about 1,500 altogether of these signs and symbols. And we still have lots of clay tablets in the British Museum. I think there's about 120,000 fragments of these cuneiform um, writings, from, usually from Mesopotamia. And which is where Abraham came from, there in the city of Ur. So th these cuneiform writings, someone in the <laughs> British Museum has to read them. There's not many people can read it. I think there's just a few people and they go every day and start reading them. 
and a lot of them are about like business transactions but there are some stories there and there's the stories about the flood um and the, the flood that it, it took over the the whole vast area of, of mesopotamia and one man who saved the livestock and people with a boat so there are some of those writings there um but most of them are kind of uh, you know so much grain was given to some somebody and and somebody's job is to read that they go to the museum every day and start reading them and every now and again we get some really interesting information from them so i try and keep in touch with what's going on there because it throws light on the times the early chapters of the bible so when the alphabet came all those cuneiform signs uh, weren't needed anymore and the alphabet is a wonderful system an acrophonic system a is for apple b is for ball c is for cat that's how it works you take the initial letter of an object and in hebrew the first letter a is aleph which is an ox strong strength and we see in psalm 119 the word the word coupled with suffering and he, because he is strong he set his face as a flint the bible says jesus he headed to jerusalem knowing what would befall him there he was strong an ox a leader that's what aleph signifies and and we read of jesus he is despised and rejected of men a man of sorrows acquainted with grief and yet he stood fast, the perfect leader. Okay, so the first stanza is Aleph. And it begins, the very first verse begins, Blessed are the undefiled in the way. That's how it starts. So if you've got Psalm 119 handy, you could follow these, couldn't you? So that's the first verse. Blessed are the undefiled in the way. That's an interesting way to start this long psalm. The way, the undefiled in the way. You remember in the Acts of the Apostles, they call the Christian life the way. Then Felix, oh, actually, do you know what? I think I've got these. I can show you. Let's have a look. Yeah. Blessed are the undefiled in the way. Psalm 119 verse 1 now Felix um, where am I let me see uh, F Felix who was well acquainted with the way adjourned the proceedings this is Acts 24 now Acts 24 verse 22 then Felix who was well acquainted with the way adjourned the proceedings see Felix was well acquainted with the way he didn't follow the way, but he was well acquainted with it. And Paul also. You remember Paul? Um, let me see if I've got that one. Uh, Paul asked the high priest for letters to the synagogues in Damascus. This was before Paul was converted. Saul, this would be. So that if he found any who belonged to the way, there it is again, he might take them as prisoners to Jerusalem. That's interesting, isn't it? Because it was called the way. And so Psalm 1, uh, Psalm 119 verse 1 begins, Blessed are the undefiled in the way. Now, the Lord Jesus did proclaim himself to be the way, didn't he? I am the way, the truth and the the life we read that in John 14 verse 6 um, so also remember John the Baptist he said I am preparing the way of the Lord so blessed are those who walk in uh, the undefiled who walk in the way there it is blessed are the undefiled and we are undefiled through christ christ's blood okay so that's the first stanza isn't it 
Um, and if you go to verse 7, I will praise thee with uprightness, that's strength of heart. So we see the Lord Jesus here. He, he, he walks in uprightness, strength, Aleph, the first stanza. Um, and then in the very last verse of stanza 1, Aleph, verse 8, he says, I will keep thy statutes, O forsake me not utterly. So right here in the beginning of this great psalm, verse 8, we see that the Lord is talking about being forsaken. I will keep thy statutes, O forsake me not utterly. So we remember that the Lord Jesus on the cross said, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? And here in the psalm we get forsake me not utterly. So we get a picture here of what is happening to Jesus, the life of Christ. And as we read through the psalm, it's important that we do keep our eyes on Christ as you read through the psalm. Of course, it applies to all those who follow the way. Um, but primarily, if we look to see Christ in there, we see a big picture of the Lord Jesus. So the second stanza, Beth, so Beth means house, Bethlehem, house of bread. So we get there in the first st verse of this stanza, wherewith shall a young man cleanse his way? A young man. We have here picked out um, a, a young man, Beth, Bethlehem. Christ came, he was born in Bethlehem. So we're looking at Christ here um, and we see Christ as, as, as a youth, growing up, young. Verse 12 says, teach me thy statutes. So do you remember the Lord Jesus when he was young? Where was shall a young man? When Jesus was young, after three days, his, uh, Joseph and his mother Mary were looking for him, and after three days, they found him in the temple courts, sitting among the teachers, listening to them, asking them questions, Luke 2, 46. So we, we see that, don't we? The young man, Jesus Christ, teach me thy statutes. And the Lord Jesus, as a young man, was eager to learn. So he went, he stayed at the temple because he said, this is my father's house. Why are you worried about me? I'm with my father. So that that's the second stanza. So today we're just kind of having a summary of it. We probably won't get through it all, but we're just having a summary because there's so much in it. So, and I don't want us to miss anything that's important. Okay, so now third stanza, Gimel which is the picture of a foot of a man. It's like, or a camel's foot. It's like our letter, we have A, B, C, don't we? Same thing with Hebrew, the first alphabet, the, the Paleo-Hebrew alphabet, one of the first alphabets to come. When Abraham moved over from Mesopotamia, it was around that time that from that area, the alphabet came. And by the time we get to Moses, it's, it's, everybody's got an angle on the alphabet. And he wrote down the first five books of the Bible using the alphabet. No need for those cuneiform symbols anymore that they put into clay. No, this could be written now with ink on parchment. And for ink, they used to use ash and soot and, and a feather or a quill or something to write. So, A, B, C. So, C here is Gimel, a camel's leg. We see our letter C there. So, in verse 19 of this stanza we read, I am a stranger in the earth. Hide not thy commandments from me. Verse 19. A stranger in the earth. We again, we see the Lord Jesus. 
Very truly, I tell you, Jesus answered, before Abraham was born, I am. The Lord Jesus was pre-existent. He was a stranger on earth. This was not his home. He was from the glory that he had with the Father, the third heaven, as the Apostle Paul calls it. Clouds, the first heaven. Stars, the second heaven. And that area where God lives, not a part of this universe, of course, but Paul called it the third heaven heaven and Jesus was from there that was his home now this world is not our home because we belong to Christ but we can make this world our home if we fail to receive the Lord Jesus but if we do receive the Lord Jesus our home is with him in glory and he's gone to prepare a room for us there so we see that the, the, the Lord Jesus was a stranger on the earth. Psalm 119, verse 19. Um, Therefore Christ came into the world. He said, sacrifice and offering you did not desire, but a body you prepared for me. The Lord Jesus had a body prepared for him. He was pre-existent to coming to earth. Then he said, here I am, I have come, it is written about me in the scroll, Psalm 40, verse 7. The Lord Jesus was a stranger here on earth. And Psalm 119 picks it out well. Okay, so fourth stanza, um, which is Daleth, Dor, our D, um, in verse uh, let's see um well the, let's look at this first the door daleth um the f- fourth letter um we see that the lord jesus is the door don't we um so shall i talk of thy wondrous works the wondrous works of god and jesus said i am the door by me if any man enter in he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture john 10 9 so in verse um back in psalm 119 so I shall talk of thy wondrous works. This is verse 27, Psalm 119. So uh, the Lord Jesus did, didn't he? He spoke of God's wondrous works. How we may be born again. It's wondrous. And so Jesus Christ, if we build our life on what he has told us, he is the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved. Hallelujah. And shall go in and out and find pasture. So Psalm 119 is picking this out. Okay then, so let's move on to the fifth stanza. Which is, hey. It's a picture of a man with his arms outstretched, pointing towards the wonderful view, saying, hey, look at that. And in this stanza, fifth stanza, verse 37, turn my eyes away from beholding vanity. Right, so the the picture, hey, is of a man pointing towards a wonderful view. And we say, look at the beautiful view, don't look at this world. Don't look at the things this world has to offer. Turn your eyes away from them. And the last verse, Behold, I have longed for thy precepts. Again, look, behold, look, verse 40. So, Psalm 119 
is telling us to look. Um, and and G Jesus stood up in the temple, didn't he? Saying, is any man thirsty? Come to me and, and drink. And, and the, when he raised his voice, the crowd looked. Look, look to him. We look to Christ, who is our saviour. We look to him. And that is what the fifth stanza uh, speaks to us of. So then let's move on to the next sixth stanza. And what do we get here? We get peg or nail, vow. So um, it's a nail. Now we know that is pointing to the Lord Jesus again. There's a whole story here, how the, the alphabet works and how Psalm 119 is picked up. The, the, the alphabet is a wonderful provision that we have. And Psalm 119 is picking up on the story of the cross and the gospel. So Psalm 119, we're in the sixth stanza now. And when we get to verse 48, we read, My hands also I will lift up unto thy commandments. Now, we know that this is veiled somewhat because when we read of prophecy in the Old Testament, it does, it is veiled. Because it's not only veiled from human beings, it's veiled also from the, those fallen spirits, the dark spirits, the foul spirits, the demons, the devils. It's veiled from them also. Because they took a part in the salvation of humanity. And if they'd have known what was coming, then um, the, the, the salvation, they would have said, oh, we know where this is leading. Let's not take part in it. So when we read the Old Testament, remember it's veiled not only to people, but it's veiled to spirits as well. Angels long to look into these things. So, but we see it, don't we? Through the Spirit, the Holy Spirit helps us to see what is prophetic in the Old Testament. The Lord Jesus did lift up his hands, didn't he? He lifted up his hands on the cross. So, the Lord Jesus did follow the commands my hands also will I lift up unto thy commandments. And it was the Lord's will, wasn't it? Um, have I got that? I, I don't know if I've got that slide there. But it, it, we read in Isaiah 53.10, It was the Lord's will to bruise him. Yet, it was the Lord's will to crush him and cause him to suffer. Isaiah 53 verse 10. So the Lord Jesus did, really did follow the commands. I will lift up my hands to thy commandments. Right, so that was the sixth stanza. So let's move on to the seventh stanza, Zain which is a picture of a mattock. What an agricultural tool for working the crop fields um, and you would cut the food um, and from the food you'd get nourishment, wouldn't you? From the um, land. So we read of the Lord Jesus. He was cut off from the land of the living. For the transgression of my people, he was punished. Isaiah 53 verse 8. <coughs> Excuse me. And in this stanza, the seventh stanza, verse 50, this is my comfort in my affliction. For thy word hath quickened 
me. So, the, yes, there was affliction for the Lord Jesus, and yet the word of God sustained him, for man does not live on bread alone, but on every word that proceeds from the mouth of the Lord. So this picture of a matter of this agricultural tool for cutting the crops in the field um, gives us a good picture here of the Lord Jesus who was cut off from the land of the living. And yet he was the bread of life. We cut the wheat, don't we? And we eat the bread. And Jesus said, this is my body broken for you. So how wonderful this is. Now, you can look back if you want to on, you know, all different people did the stanzas, didn't they? On Living Stones. And it's also on on the Living Stones YouTube channel too. Or is it on Genie's Vids? Oh, I think it could be on Genie's Vids, which Tim, um, he's he oversees that and puts the videos. I think all the stanzas are there. But you can also look on the Facebook page <clears throat> and see all the stanzas there too. Okay, um, because people uh, explained, didn't they, which each, what, what each stanza meant. Okay, so <clears throat> we'll do one more. The eighth stanza, which is Hef, which is a wall, um, a picture of a tent wall. This is eighth stanza hef and the meaning of the letter means to be outside the wall you're outside the confines of the tent and again we see christ here who left the confines of glory and came to earth um, the earth is the lord's and everything in it so i thought on my ways and turned my feet unto thy testimonies. I made haste and delayed not to keep thy commandments. That's verse 59 and verse 60. So praise God that the Lord turned his feet outside the confines of heaven. He came to this earth. He made haste. He did not delay when the time had fully come, God sent his son to be the saviour of the world. So, verse 62, at midnight I will rise and give thanks unto thee. Um, the Lord came to this dark world. Verse 64, the earth, O Lord, is full of thy mercy, teach thy statutes. So we see that veiled within this tapestry is the story of the Lord Jesus who is the Word. And the, the Lord has graciously given us the alphabet. We don't have to, in school, we don't have to learn all those 600, 1,000 um, little syllables anymore. But th we have the alphabet. And uh, we don't know for sure, but some people uh, say that, you know, it was the Hebrew people who gave us the alphabet. We don't know that for sure. But we know that where they were located in the wilderness, there is lots of um, Paleo-Hebrew um, letters there that we can see at various points. So we know that they had something to do with the alphabet and they took on the alphabet. God wanted them to know the alphabet. And this Psalm 119 gives us the story of the gospel in the alphabet. Okay, so we've got through to the eighth stanza. This is just a summary now. Um, if you want to check out all the other videos that people did, they are um, on Facebook, the Facebook group, or on the um, videos, Genie's videos, I think they're on. Okay then, so let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we do thank you for this great and wonderful tapestry that we have in the Bible, Psalm 119. It's wonderful, Lord. And we are blessed 
that we can look at it and read it. It's such a long psalm, Lord, but every stanza has something important to tell us. And we thank you, Lord, that you help us to see the prophetic elements within this psalm. Lord, uh, as we look at the Lord Jesus, we see elements of his life in this psalm and we thank you lord that you availed it but through the spirit we understand and we grasp we have that revelation lord and we thank you for that so be with us this day help us to keep our eyes on you and to have your word in our hearts your word have i hidden in my heart so, Lord, we give ourselves to you this day. Minister to us, we pray in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Okay, great. Praise the Lord. Um, on uh, Thursday, is it? It's the, it's the seventh tomorrow. The niece will be uh, speaking for a, a, a while in the ladies' meeting at 7.15. So it'll be a time of fellowship and then just for 10-15 minutes Lenise will be sharing as well. So ladies, please uh, come to the Zoom login, the usual Zoom login. If you haven't got it, please ask and we'll give it to you. Uh, the, so on Zoom, tomorrow 7.15. Okay, well we praise God for his goodness to us. And we thank him for his word, don't we? We stand on God's word. Okay. God bless you all.